Well, in the world, nuclear energy is very, very marginal. It only represents less than 3% of the uh, final consumption of energy worldwide. So it's uh, uh, anyway not likely that uh, it's going to play any major role in energy and climate change issues in, in the next decade. The France nuclear program is uh, sold by the French government as a model to be followed by other countries, but uh, actually it's, it doesn't deliver in terms of uh, energy security and energy climate, and France is not doing better than other European countries from that point of view. It hasn't solved uh, major problems of safety, of uh, waste piling up, of uh, security and proliferation, and it doesn't bring uh, any uh, uh, seeable uh, positive impact on the French economics. So altogether, uh, it, it doesn't look like something very positive, and on the contrary, uh, it's like locking in the French energy system in uh, uh, old-fashioned uh, old uh, solutions instead of uh, allowing to develop renewables and energy efficiency which would be much needed. Uh, everyone knows that all these plants have been conceived and built and operated for most of them before uh, the Chernobyl accident, so there's not return of experience included. And uh, the French Nuclear Safety Authority itself says that uh, all French reactors would not be licensed under modern criteria. Uh, so that's one wrong signal. And also, uh, there's, there's been a series of near-miss accidents, you know, situations where uh, there, there wasn't a severe accident, but it came really close to uh, the start of meltdown, for instance. And also, there's uh, the, the number of what so-called significant events, uh, which tell you something about uh, degradation of safety in plants is increasing, uh, has increased in the last 10 years, to almost two incidents per day uh, on French nuclear power plants. And that's because of uh, growing economic pressure, aging of reactors, and loss of competency. And all that goes in the wrong direction and towards an increasing risk of a major accident in France. Uh, real costs have always been higher than projected costs and this shows for instance with the EPR project, uh, the EPR that's built in uh, Flamanville in France, uh, which was started uh, on, on the basis of a cost of 30 euros per megawatt hour and it's only started to be built but the cost is, not, is now said to be 58 euros per megawatt hour, so it's all, it has almost doubled in a few years' time. Uh, anyway, this doesn't account for a lot of indirect costs that come as a kind of hidden subsidies uh, with a research and development program, with uh, long-term uh, liabilities with decommissioning and waste management, uh, costs uh, associated to uh, security, liability issues, so a, a lot of hidden costs that, that are not fully included in that calculation. The potential for uh, energy savings is uh, the higher potential of all alternatives you know, to when, when you want to address energy security and climate change issues. And this shows even in official scenarios like uh, the one developed by the um, International Energy Agency which developed a kind of technology-driven scenario uh, to, to show how much CO2 emissions could be saved by 2050. And altogether, uh, in the savings, energy efficiency represents more than two-thirds in the end of uh, the uh, emissions cuttings. Well, uh, I think it's a bad idea for Brazil to try to develop its nuclear program as if it could solve uh, energy and climate issues. Uh, I think there's uh, a high potential for developing renewables and most of all there's uh, an incredible high potential for energy efficiency and 
that should be the priority because the, the, it's a developing country, so it, it's building its infrastructures, and it's very important that these infrastructures are built in the most energy efficient way because that will uh, imply energy consumptions for the next decade and almost century.